I did, I said, beginning. I just like that you get so much reaction over the ride. I mean, it's not like logos here or something. It's not about I was just on with the CBS guy, Jay Wright. Jay Wright's doing our game. That's really? Kind of fun. That's kind of cool. Because he just than, retired. Is that better than Dave Fife? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> looking at the film last night, um, I, thought, I thought we did some good things, but I did think we uh, did some poor things offensively and got a little stagnant. Uh, we have to play better, but uh, we're looking forward to it. I mean, what a great opportunity on Sunday afternoon, CBS, and uh, against the number one team in the nation in a place that I respect and value. And uh, you know, coaches are friends, and yet uh, it won't be for two hours. So it'll be, a, I think, a good game. Last time we played, I thought we played pretty well. Um, we didn't guard the big guy like we maybe should have. And yet I think it was uh, Fletcher Lawyer at the last five minutes of the game that beat us, not the big guy. Um, you know, he's going to get what he gets. Uh, but Fletcher, we kept him in track most of the game, along with Smith. And the last five minutes, he, uh, he did some great things. And give him credit. We didn't guard it as well. So hopefully we'll do a better job of that. Questions? What did you learn from the first time around that can help you? I mean, he's such a low. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're going to look at a couple different things and ways to cover them, but uh, try to get a little more uh, diversity in our covering of him. Uh, you know, we're going to try to change it up a little bit. But uh, for the most part, I mean, uh, they don't hide what they do. Uh, when you get a guy like that, you couldn't hide him anyway. And, uh, and yet, you know, what Purdue has done a great job of is, uh, I think it's the best team in the nation. And I think Matt has done as good a job as any coach I've ever seen getting guys to play their roles. I mean, he's got some guys that are good players taking two shots a game, you know. He's gotten guys to play their roles and uh, they know that at the end of the shot clock or anywhere else, they just throw it somewhere near the block and he's going to catch it. Now what he does with it, you know, is usually pretty positive. And then to make matters worse, he's a good free throw shooter. So um, you can't just hack a shackle. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I learned that um, he got better from last year. Um, he's as big as he was last year. Um, and, uh, and yet, because of the way they play their roles, they haven't blown people out in that. They, they just grind you, grind you, grind you. Don't make a lot of mistakes. Um, it's a great team to look at and say, you know what, you get people that fit in, play their roles, and good things can happen, and that's what he's done. So when you, when you come within a point, though, it's not like I'm guessing you want to change all that much. Because no, there's, no, I mean, like, like I said, you know, I mean, that was what I was joking about the other day. You know, you, you can, we can double people and give up threes, you know, and threes for twos. I just say we got to mix it up a little bit more. But um, no, I don't. I, I didn't mind what we did. I think we had to cover a little better at the end. But I thought we did a pretty good job against a good team. And you know how much Malik will be able to play. I mean, he played last night a little longer than I thought he would. But uh, you know, like he won't practice today now, and uh, and uh, he feels more than decent. I mean, you know, he's going to be a little sore, but he's feeling pretty good. But sometimes what happens, as we know, it happened with Jamie, it happened with him the first time. You come back in that game, you're really good. And then the next couple of games, you kind of reacclimate him. So I don't know what will happen. Malik's got a little more experience, but he'll help us too, you know, because we didn't have him last time. How much? I don't know. I was going to ask you about Malik too, and the reintegration factor is something you've always talked about with getting a guy back from an injury. With Malik, because he's so versatile, is there a difference with that? Because it seemed like it was pretty seamless with him coming back. Yeah, it did seem seamless for one night, but you know, like Jaden, it's taken some time, but Jaden is now really coming on, you know, both offensively and defensively, like we thought he could. But uh, with Malik, you know, a little older, a little more experienced, uh, a little more versatile, I think you're right. I think I think he'll handle it as well as anybody. But, uh, you know, after that first game he had, 
it against Michigan or whoever he played, and then, you know, didn't play quite the same the next couple, but people get to know him too, and yet we're trying to integrate him into our offense at a couple different positions, and that's a little, uh, that's a little adventurous in itself. He, he played a big factor defensively, though, it seemed like. I mean, you guys held that team, scored like nearly 80 to 60 something. It seemed like he was all over with Murray. Too. Yeah, he was. I mean, he did a good job on Murray. AJ did a good job on Murray, and, uh, we didn't do much on you list, so you know you're always giving up something, you know, and uh, and uh, like I thought we did a great job against Purdue last time, and then Fletcher really showed why he's one of the best freshmen in this league because he did a hell of a job late, and found a way to make a couple baskets and get to the free throw line. Uh, you list last night, you know, we we gave up some things to get something else, and it's. That's what it usually is, you know, not many people are good enough to just stop everybody. But I thought we did do a good job, and I thought having him around is just a calming effect because he makes up for some mistakes for other people. I don't know if there's a more respectful rivalry in the conference than you and Purdue, and the piano you and Matt would have been Judd. Yeah. I guess Gene. you started with Judd and Gene, right? Oh, yeah, the Judd and Gene <laughs> show, yeah. that's. <laughs> still remember Clem Haskin named his two ostriches Judd and Gene, you know, <laughs> on his farm. So uh, those guys, that is funny, but it is true. I hate to say it. I saw a picture of him. Yeah, yeah, it is true. He still got him, I think, down in Kentucky. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's been great respect. I mean, Bruce Weber has been one of my better friends. He was there for 20 years. Matt, we recruited Matt, and Matt's done a good job there. We're on some boards together. So I'd say it is a great respected rivalry, and uh, we've kind of done it similar ways. You know, I don't have a monster like he's got, but I mean, the kind of players we recruit and what we get and what we do, it's, it's been kind of similar. And yet this year, I mean, what are they, 21 or 19 and one? something like that. Um, he's done a hell of a job. I mean, uh, that's a little bit of a surprise team. But uh, again, I think he's the best I've seen at defining roles and getting guys to play them. Now, when you're, when you're winning, it's always easier. But uh, he's won a lot of close games. Um, and he's done a hell of a job since he's been there. Thomas, with, with AJ, the way we've seen him play this year, how well he's played. It feels like last night was the first time we've seen him in a while. Struggled the way he has missing shots, the turnovers. Obviously, the free throws I think are are bothering him the last few times. But what are your discussions with him now? That he's had one of these games where it yeah had a long one with him this morning, to be honest with you, early. And uh, you know, I, I just think that uh, he's got to get back to realizing who he is and what he is. And sometimes, you know. Like, I didn't like the three he took with 20 seconds in the shot clock after we get the rebound, you know, three minutes left. He had made one. You know, you don't go on whether you made one is, you know, like I try to tell him, if we were in a huddle, we're designing the last shot, we needed a three, probably wouldn't go there. And that's, you know, he's got to look at those things and figure out what he can't do and what he can't do. And, you know, I, I worry what all of them, are they wearing down a little bit from this stretch, you know, because, he and Joey and, and Tyson had to play a lot of minutes and uh, just didn't seem to have the zip he had. So hopefully we better today. We had a long talk this morning. Uh, he's worked very hard on his free throw shooting. He still shoots him very well. And uh, I thought he let that drag him down a little bit on the last couple of games, but that doesn't worry me because I see him shoot him every day and he shoot the ball very well from the free throw line. But uh, he's got to realize that you're the head of our team and running our team. You know, as I say, the head guys, the body does, and the head wasn't as solid, the body wasn't as solid last night. Um, I know this is a short turnaround, but you've prepped Purdue before, and after that, I think they're a little bit more spaced out, and, and you've got Malik back. Are you hoping, I know you just said you're worried about AJ being a little worn down. Are you hoping these guys can get a little bit more energized, that they're a little bit more rest here? Yeah, exactly. Games? You know, I think if you get, I mean, AJ was, I mean, Malik was playing 25 to 30 minutes, you know, I mean, that's what we pencil them in as. So you could divide up three different guys and give them five less minutes, and that would make a huge difference for an AJ, for a Tyson, for a Joey. Um, that would really help us in that respect, but then you still gotta work that guy in too. So this is gonna still be a work in progress, but what a great opportunity we have 
to go down there and play the number one and, and, and a team that has earned the number one ranking. I mean, they've played a good schedule, they've beaten some good people, and they've maintained this consistency. So it'll be a great test that I'm looking forward to. Did you address the slow starts? Because what happens in this building, you could be over by halftime. Did you address that? Yeah, you know, it could be. I mean, you know, but Illinois, we had a slow start, and that was tough. Uh, you know, Indiana, we had a good start. I mean, I don't know. We seem to have slower starts at home than on the road, and our fans have been unbelievable. But, uh, you know, that's some of the things I talked to AJ about, too. You know, I think some of our shot selection early. The Purdue game last time, I remember, he had about, I don't know, he was having an out-of-body experience, is what I called it, you know, and uh, those first five minutes, and we were down 20-something, 11 or something, whatever it was, and, uh, you know, disappointing, but uh, happy about the strong in-betweens, and yet I think we've worn down a little bit at the end, both Illinois and Indiana, so hopefully now, we got an extra day last week, you got to get a guy back that can get some minutes. Hopefully, this will help us in that respect. How do you feel this team has been rebounding? I mean, it seemed, we saw Joey and Amadi last night kind of go up. It seems like uh, Jaden as well is starting to improve. Jaden is definitely coming to his own now a little bit. You know, he's playing way better defensively. He has been more active. Uh, offensively, he can get a shot for himself. He's shooting the ball pretty well. You know, I think you're seeing exactly what I said. It took a month. You know, to come back, and now the last couple of weeks he's been better. I'm hoping it doesn't take that long from the league. But um, we're we're not a great rebounding team, but we are getting to be better. And uh, you know, the job we did against Rutgers, the job we did, in, you know, even last night, Iowa came in a very good rebounding team. So you know, Purdue, I think we only won them by one last time, but. There, you know, they got one guy that can rebound and and, and first has, has done a, a great job for them. And Gillis is, you know, they got two power forwards that play 20 minutes each. And uh, last time, you know, we just had Joey, so you know, the league will be able to help their son too. And, and we think now we can play two bigs together against a team like that some. So we, we think we're a little better than we were back then, um, not that long ago. We'll see what happens. Tom, when, when you get Malik back and you guys play like you did last night, you're at the half point of the Big Ten season. Does it make you sort of wonder about maybe what could have been if you had a full team and then wonder about what could be? I mean, you guys have only played yeah, 10 you games. You know, but a lot of guys, that, you know, I mean, I mean, there's still a lot of basketball left and there could be a lot of injuries left. You know, uh, Michigan had a, you know, injury in the Jet. I think he's one of the best freshmen in the league. Um, some people haven't had any injuries yet. You know, are they going to get some? You know, some people are going to go through this tougher schedule where they're playing more games in a shorter period of time. It's just been a strange year. Sure, I look at that. I, I think there's some games that we could have, should have won. Um, you know, if we would have had those two guys and, and playing together and had a rotation. But uh, everybody goes through. I mean, I, I said uh, Nebraska's going through some serious injuries right now. Uh, knock on wood, that hasn't happened to us yet. But, uh, or they're year-ending injuries, but uh, I, you know what, I'm just happy where we are. I don't think we're where we're going to be, but you have to win enough games to, to be in the hunt for things, you know, and that's what this period of time is now. We can't say, well, we got to wait till the league comes back. you got to win some games. you got to start getting better as a team, and you get into February, which we're right around the corner, and it, uh, it gets where things got to start getting a little more uh, consistent. What, what does Mackey rank is a place that you, I mean, you've had different buildings that have been different problematic at different points of your career, largely based on the teams you're, you're facing or, or, or bring into there. But I'm just wondering, like, Mackey seems like a place where you can take a good team and still it can get away from you by 20 or 30 sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're, they, you know, it's the same size as ours, except that they're all bleachers. So it's in a smaller area and it, uh, I mean, I will say this, our fans have been so good this year that I think we can go with anybody, but there, you know, it's a religion in the state of Indiana, you know. Uh, football at Indiana and Purdue is getting better, but it's never been a thing. It's, you know, where Michigan, Michigan State football is king, and uh, there everything goes to basketball. And, uh, 
so they have you know, very educated fans and fans that uh, really support them. And uh, it's a tough place to play because of how close the fans are to you. You guys have all been there. But uh, the advantage of playing in the venues we played in and the advantage, you know, we've been to Illinois, we've been to Indiana, uh, those are no easy places to play either. So uh, I think we're prepared for it, but uh, tomorrow we'll bring a little crowd noise in and see if we can simulate. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll Fred dress up like Purdue Pete or whatever his name is, the Boilermaker, and walk in there and uh, scare us. So we'll all be ready and ready to go. I wouldn't have to dress up to scare us. Good point. <laughs> you said it, not me. Before I get to my question, you might be want to know that apparently some people their eye, their watches go off at the like during your games. The decibel is so high it tells them to leave the because it's so loud in there. But anyway, um, it, 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 it alerts computer? them. Yeah, like during your games, the last couple of games you've had, it, it alerts buy them. One of them. <laughs> that fires me up. That's but <laughs> anyway, Thank God. the uh, with when Cassius was on the team, obviously when you were in a tight situation you could really count on him when you needed a basket or something. How much has Tyson kind of developed into that guy, or do you see that? Are you seeing that from him? I am seeing that from him because he can get a shot for himself. If uh, we've got a mismatch, he can attack it. Uh, he's a good free throw shooter. He can both penetrate and score from the three. Um, you know, Cash has had something that not many players have, but one thing that uh, Tyson has, he has that athletic ability that he can almost get a shot on anybody. So he is maturing into that position, and that would be great for us because we don't just get to throw it in and have, you know, the dominance inside. Like maybe even even we had some with Xavier, like Purdue has or Indiana has. Or, but uh, but I like my team. Uh, I like the way they are, and I like the fact that Tyson is coming around right now. So. Did you ever get an explanation on this technical? No, he said. Well, both guys were. Melting off to each other. And I said, well, they weren't melting off to you. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a new one, you know? I'd be like two coaches going at it. We're not yelling at the refs, we're yelling at each coach. Why would you get a technical? It doesn't make sense. But I, I don't the know. The more interesting one was the Hauser. And, and yeah, that was weird. Too. I mean, I, I, have you ever seen a stoppage in play where there wasn't anything called? Yeah, you know, you know, don't condemn that. I think more of that should be done. Good. In other words, if they see something, Instead of like one game we had this year, double technical for yeah. what I thought was no reason. Why get a follow on somebody? Why do this and that? Uh, the, the older freshers would have said, hey, you come here, you come here. Now you're not allowed to grab them because it's illegal. But I mean, would you please come over here? Would you please come over here? And hey guys, let's not, uh, next time I'm gonna call something. I love that, you know? I, I think that's preventative management instead of crisis management. You mentioned Pierre needing more out of him. How much can he give you another dimension to this game? Oh, oh that big dimension. Pierre gave us big dimension. Listen, uh, whether you think so or not, you think I'm kidding you. Pierre Brooks could be very valuable to this team. He can shoot it as good as anybody I got. He's got strength. Um, you know, some of it is coaches put players in a position that isn't good. And sometimes players put coaches in a position that isn't good. It's probably been a little bit of both and we're, Working through it, he had a good week of practice. Um, but Pierre Brooks still very valuable to us, uh, if, if you ask me. I mean, I think he could bring something that few can he can get a shot off on anybody, and, and he's uh, he can really shoot it. He's struggled, he's been struggling to shoot it lately, but he can shoot. Did he seem more aggressive to you last night? Three yeah, times? yeah, last night we actually did. We told him that exact same thing. He had two good days of practice. He had better. I think what happens is, especially when you're a homegrown guy, um, too many people get in your melon. You know, you gotta clear that thing. You gotta clear your head and you gotta focus in on the job. Because outside people have no clue what goes on in here. And yet the inside people do have a clue until they hear it from all the outside people. And then it messes with their, you know. And I think he's got too many things going on and he just gotta relax. and and figure out that uh, there's some things I needed to do I didn't do. And there's some things I can do that I will do. And you put those two together and, um, you know, maybe we get everybody on the same page here as we get into the second half of the season. With Malik 
you can't, you can only manage your minutes, right? You can't tell them to be careful about that. When he left that dump the other day, I'm thinking, well, he's going to land, what's going to happen? He has to go all yeah, that's, that's That's where I've changed, right? Glass was half full. I said, go for it, Malik. It didn't even bother me. The old me would have said, oh, jeez, look at yeah. that. Now, he, now we, we, we will manage his minutes a little. Uh, your your uh, vocabulary, we'll, we'll, we'll check his pitch count a little bit, you know. But uh, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to tell him, don't play hard, don't do this, and don't do that. He, he was, he was really good last night, really good in a lot of ways, and uh, huddles, halftime, uh, and I thought I'm covered. Marty had a solid game last night, and it's been solid throughout the year um, at times. Uh, against a, a team like Purdue with a guy like he, he's going to need to be on top of his game. What, what are you looking for him to develop to that next level, I guess? You know, Marty did, and in fact, he did some really good things last night, and yet there was sometimes he didn't do some really good things. You know, we just got to, he too has got to get some confidence and some consistency. But at first double-double was a good thing. Um, Guarding Edie, we're asking him to, you know, um, I don't know what, what it would be that I would compare it to, you know, because uh, you're giving away six, seven inches, you're giving away 60, 70 pounds, and, uh, and you got to do the things you can do. What we got to do is we got to put him in some ball screens and we got to get him moving a little bit more. So hopefully we get Edie, although they keep him in there pretty close, but. Uh, you know, just when people were ready to give up on Mahdi, as we all know in the uh, world of tweets, um, we, uh, you know, he has a good game and I think uh, he's going to get more consistent. We know that, he knows that, but uh, in this game, stay out of foul. You talked a lot about Malik, but there was a moment in the second half or before free throw, it seemed like he had a huddle on the floor. Is that something that just a senior can do that doesn't show up in the box score or anything? Well, I don't know if just a senior can do it. I kind of get AJ to do more of that, but uh, that senior did do it, you know. And I, I'd like to see Joey do a little more of that. I'd like to see Malik do it. I'd like to see AJ do a little more of that. That's that's a valuable part of being a, a good player and a, and a good teammate, too. And uh, I did see when Malik did that, and that's some of the things we've been missing, you know. And so hopefully uh, Malik will keep growing if we can keep him healthy. And uh, we'll get him healthy at just how fast we can. Anything else? All right, Ken, those of you are coming, I'll see you down there. Those of you that are